Lynn Chaplesky, and I'm an oncology nurse. An oncology nurse specializes in the care of patients with cancer. Today's presentation is about cancer. What exactly is cancer? Cancer is a group of diseases that originates from one cell or a group of cells that becomes abnormal and grows quickly out of control. These are called cancerous or malignant cells. Cancer cells are different from normal cells in the following ways. Cancer cells multiply out of control. For example, if a person fractures a bone, normal cells grow to repair the damaged area and stop growing when the bone has healed. Cancer cells continue to grow and multiply without stopping. Cancer cells look different from normal cells under a microscope. The internal structure of the cell is different, abnormal. Cancer cells have the ability to spread to other organs or tissues. This is called metastasis. Cancer cells can invade the blood and the lymph systems in the body. Cancer cells grow more rapidly than normal cells and can divide while traveling through the body. Cancer cells require more of the body's nutrients than normal cells. And finally, cancer tumors or growths can develop their own blood supply. It is estimated that one out of three people in the United States will experience cancer in his or her lifetime. Who is most likely to develop cancer? First of all, the older a person becomes, the higher the risk of developing cancer. African Americans have a higher risk of developing cancer than other populations. There are also social and economic factors which contribute to the risk of developing cancer, such as those who have a low level of education, people who do not have health insurance, those who have no transportation, or do not have access to the health care system. Genetics has also shown to play a part in the development of cancer. This means that a person has an increased risk of developing cancer if a close family member has cancer, such as a parent or a sibling. What causes cancer? Cancer is caused by the exposure of the inner structures of normal cells to carcinogens. Carcinogens are substances or agents that can damage the cell's DNA. Known carcinogens or cancer-causing agents include certain chemicals such as tobacco products and secondhand smoke. Some viruses have been linked to cancer. Radiation is another carcinogen, either from x-rays or from exposure to the sun. One physical cause of cancer is asbestos, and another is wood dust. Some foods and diets can contribute to the development of cancer. A diet high in fat and low in fiber may cause colon, rectal, or breast cancer. Lastly, in some women, hormone replacement therapy has been associated with the development of breast cancer. Before cancer is detected, 10 or more years may pass between exposure to the cancer-causing agent and the development of cancer. Many types of cancers can be prevented. 60 to 70 percent of all cancers have been shown to be associated with behaviors we can control. So how can we prevent cancer? First of all, a diet high in fresh fruits and vegetables and low in saturated fats can reduce the risk of certain types of cancer. Maintaining a healthy weight reduces the risk of breast, colon, and other cancers. Moderate exercise at least 30 minutes, five or more days a week for adults, 
is very beneficial in fortifying the body's natural immune system to ward off cancer. Another method to help prevent cancer from developing is limiting exposure to the sun, starting from childhood. The use of sunscreens, sunglasses, hats, and other clothing protects the skin from damaging rays. Lastly, but maybe more, most importantly, is by not smoking. One out of five deaths each year is caused by cancer. There are programs to help people stop smoking, offered through the American Lung Association, the American Cancer Society, and most hospitals throughout the country. It is important to prevent young people from starting smoking in the first place and banning workplace smoking and smoking in public places can reduce the exposure to secondhand smoke. The earlier cancer is discovered, the easier it is to treat people and potentially cure cancer. The seven early warning signs of cancer can be remembered by thinking of the word caution. These signs tell us we need to be checked by a physician. C is for a change in bowel and bladder habits lasting more than two weeks. A is for a sore that does not heal. U is for unusual bleeding or discharge. This includes rectal bleeding, blood in the urine, or bleeding from the eyes, ears, nose, or mouth. Vaginal bleeding in premenstrual girls and women past menopause warrants attention by the physician. T is for a thickening or lump in the breast or elsewhere. I is for indigestion or difficulty swallowing lasting for several days for no obvious reason. O is for an obvious change in a wart or mole. Changes such as an increase in size, a change in color, a wart or mole that becomes itchy or irritated or starts to bleed should be noted. N is for a nagging cough that does not go away. If any of these signs are discovered, it is important to see your doctor. If cancer is found, how can it be treated? There are four general ways cancer is treated. Chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery, and biotherapy. The goals of cancer treatment can be cure of the cancer, control of the cancer, or palliation, which means relief of symptoms. Some cancers are best treated with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a cancer treatment using special drugs that kill cancer cells. There are over 50 chemotherapy in drugs in use today. These drugs can be used alone or in combination with other drugs. Chemotherapy kills cancer cells at anywhere in the body they may have spread. Chemotherapy is commonly administered through a vein, intravenously or IV. Some chemotherapy drugs may be taken by mouth and there are other ways chemotherapy is administered. Chemotherapy drugs may be a hazard to healthcare workers who are exposed to them if protective garb is not used. Gloves and a disposable gown must be worn when handling bodily fluids such as urine, vomitus, or other fluids. The gloves and gowns must be discarded after each patient use or when soiled. Eye protection should be worn if a spill or splashing could occur. Protect precautions for handling body fluids should be used for at least 48 hours after chemotherapy is given. Precautions for handling stool should last for seven days after chemotherapy. A toilet should be flushed twice after patient use or when disposing of urine or stool for up to 48 hours after chemotherapy. The urine and stool of a patient receiving chemotherapy can be very irritating to the patient's skin. Cleansing the skin 
and applying a protective cream is very helpful. If a chemotherapy spill should occur, it is to be cleaned up by specially trained personnel, usually a nurse. The side effects of chemotherapy occur because chemotherapy not only kills cancer cells, but kills normal cells as well, cells that are rapidly reproducing in the body, such as those in the bone marrow, the mouth, the gastrointestinal tract, hair follicles, and skin. The most common side effects for patients receiving chemotherapy are nausea, vomiting, hair loss, which is called alopecia, a decrease in the patient's blood counts, diarrhea, constipation, mouth sores, and sometimes skin problems. Loss of appetite and fatigue are two other major side effects. Each patient responds to chemotherapy differently. Some patients may experience many of the side effects, while others experience no side effects at all. Another common method to treat cancer is radiation therapy. Radiation therapy kills cancer cells through the use of high energy ionizing radiation. Unlike chemotherapy that kills normal cells as well, radiation therapy primarily kills cancer cells in the area that radiation is being given. How is radiation therapy given? The total dose of radiation needed to kill the cancer cells is divided into small doses to prevent life-threatening side effects and even death of the patient. It is usually given five days per week for 25 to 30 treatments. Each treatment usually lasts only a few minutes. Radiation can be given internally or externally like x-rays. There are no special precautions for patients receiving external radiation. Precautions to be used by healthcare workers for patients receiving internal radiation include the use of a lead apron and limiting the amount of time spent with the patient in close proximity. Surgery is another means of treating cancer. Surgery can be used alone to, to cure cancer or it can be used with other cancer treatments such as chemotherapy, radiation, or biotherapy. A newer method of treating cancer is the use of biotherapy. The biotherapy is the use of agents that are biological, which means similar to those found in the body. Biotherapy works by enhancing the patient's own immune system and sometimes by stopping the growth of blood cells and blood vessels that feed the tumor. Biotherapy is given similarly to the way chemotherapy is administered, usually intravenously or subcutaneously, which means under the skin into the fatty tissue. There are also similar precautions and side effects with biotherapy as there are with chemotherapy. When a physician determines that nothing more can be done to cure the patient with cancer, palliative care plays a role. Palliative care is providing care and support to patients who are near the end of life. The goal of palliative care is to make the patient more comfortable and improve the quality of life for that patient. Hospice care is an organization that provides palliative care and other supportive cares. It can be used within an institution such as a hospital, a nursing home, or a freestanding facility, or hospice care can be provided within the patient's own home. The goals of hospice care are the same as palliative care. Patients with cancer have many emotional and social needs. 
Many patients experience emotional distress and anxiety. This may be related to the just receiving the diagnosis of cancer or be related to the treatment required. Some patients actually experience depression. It is not uncommon. This can be due to difficulty coping with the cancer diagnosis and the treatment. Cancer patients also experience a feeling of loss of control, primarily due to lack of knowledge about care and treatment, or they may need extra help in doing their activities of daily life. Grief is another emotion that patients experience due to the diagnosis of cancer, sometimes a poor prognosis, changes in body image, loss of hair, weight loss, all contribute to feelings of a sense of grief and loss. There may be family issues, such as changes in the role in the family of the cancer patient, or relying on family for some or all of their care, which adds an additional burden to the family. There may be financial issues. The cost of cancer care may be covered by the patient's insurance, but not all treatments are covered. Now we will listen to a patient share his experiences and feelings about cancer care and treatment. We can learn from this patient how we can best meet the needs of our patients who have cancer. Mark, uh, I'd like to ask, what's prompted you to use the health care system in recent times? Well, in the last recent times, I would say in 2002, uh, I was a victim of a heart attack uh, right on this living room floor. The second time um, was, of course, when I was diagnosed with this multiple myeloma. So multiple myeloma, just for the um, audience, is a, a form of cancer? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was diagnosed, uh, I think, December 6th of last year. Okay. After a couple of other diagnoses that turned out to be false. You've had, I'm sure, a lot of experiences with caregivers with these health issues that you've talked about. What would you say would, might be some situations that you felt did not go very well? Well, uh, one of the first things I remember is the um, intensive care facilities at the hospital and the hustle and bustle of everything going on in that facility is, is just astounding. Uh, people in and out constantly putting in needles and checking temperatures and uh, pulse ox and uh, wheeling these little machines in and out constantly, taking um, all sorts of various readings. I found most of them to be personable, uh, especially the nurses. Some of the others that were just doing readings um, were not quite so personable. They would just come in and take their readings and leave. Um, oftentimes at all hours of the night, which I'm sure is necessary. Uh, but I would say as a general rule, most of the meetings I had with various caregivers was positive. I did have a rather strange one with a, a nurse that asked me what I had and uh, I told her multiple myeloma and she said, oh, oh dear, oh dear, that's terrible, oh dear. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was uh, an interesting response. How did you feel after she said that? Uh, poorly. Uh, I, it was uh, 
anyone in that position, it, it, it's, it's quite a letdown. You look to nurses and doctors and other caregivers to be more positive about things and to offer you hope. Yeah, hope. Hope is the word. And she just uh, she blew it. Did you feel like you were treated as an individual uh, when when you were in the hospital? Um, were you advised? Were you told what was going on? For the most part, were there times that uh, you there was lack of privacy, or you know what? What about some of those issues? Um, again, I hate to single out intensive care, but there it is quite intensive, of course. Um, I think there were times in that room where I think my privacy was compromised somewhat by just the fact that I'd leave the curtain open mm. to the room, and there were people outside talking about whatever they wanted to talk about. Um, How did that the, make you feel? Well, I felt rather exposed. Uh, I, I, I thought it was a, a lack of privacy that I thought I should have been afforded in a private room. Um, I just think it could have been handled a little better. I was in the in the center of things physically, mm -hmm. in so much as the room was in the middle of everything, and perhaps they couldn't help but have a a place to congregate right in front of the room. But yeah, I. So it it was sounds like there was an inappropriate placement uh, for their discussions. So, so it would have been a confidentiality issue for one mm -hmm. of what was being discussed. You could overhear anything as well as the, as you mentioned earlier, humility of, of lack of privacy and some of your basic needs. What experiences have you had with caregivers that you really felt were done well? my main nurse in intensive care was the most giving, caring, at least to someone in my position, uh, the most giving, caring person I'd ever run across. Uh, she, I, I honestly felt as if she enjoyed what she was doing. What was it that was so good about her? What did she do right? Well, something as, I shouldn't say as simple as a bedpan, but to let somebody use a bedpan and do it in a way that wasn't quite so embarrassing as you might think, by arranging blankets and, and, and towels and so forth, so that even if the curtain were open, it wouldn't have been a problem. She just was genuinely interested in how I felt about things. You had also talked about how you had developed some kidney problems because uh, one of you had been told that you needed to drink water, a lot of water, <clears throat> and you ended up not really taking it as seriously as you might, but probably because you weren't given enough information. Can you share a little bit about that experience? I, I just didn't drink enough water to stave off that second bout with dehydration. And had I listened to the nurse and other caregivers ahead of time and taken that warning seriously, uh, I might not have been in that situation. I think what was lacking, though, was the fact that when you were told to drink water, you were not told what could happen if you didn't. 
And do you think it would have been different if the caregivers had shared with you that without drinking adequate amounts of water, you could end up with uh, kidney failure? Absolutely. I think if, if, had I known the consequences of my lack of compliance, I probably would have had three or four gallons a day. Yeah. Uh, so the importance of letting people know why mm -hmm. we are requesting them to do this or that is, is equally as important as, as telling them what to do. Right. Very true. Finally, Mark, I'd like to ask if um, you could share with new students coming into the healthcare field what advice that you might have for them caring for patients with cancer. Well, besides the obvious uh, uh, empathy, um, I think the most important thing is to listen to what the patient is is really saying. As we talked about, uh, many of them may feel isolated from the rest of the world, given their disease, and one of the things that is quite important is if you have any symptoms at all, be it something from a sore throat to a case of, of constipation, this should be brought up so that the caregiver is aware of it, can pass it on to whoever needs to make a decision about it. Caregivers, I would guess, would, would should be cognizant of their own health, so if they have perhaps uh, a respiratory infection or something along that line, uh, recuse themselves from the situation where they might come in contact with someone with uh, an immune system that's somewhat compromised. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they should also be constantly washing their hands. I think that's a small thing, but it can help uh, alleviate any number of problems just from from carrying germs around on hands. It's, uh, I'm sure we all be amazed at what we carry on our hands. I think as a cancer patient, we we feel different than everybody else. Now, whether everybody else feels different than we do, I, I don't know if that goes both ways. Uh, I just think people regard those with no hair or a pick line coming out of their arms or some other accoutrement that's on their body that normally you wouldn't find. I, I think they're all regarded as something just a little different. And I, th I think that caregivers should concentrate on treating them as people, just like you and I. Just We're all people. We have a disease. It's unfortunate, but treat us like people, and we'll all get along just fine. Thanks for your time, Mark. Anytime, Kathy. I was glad to do it. In conclusion, many types of cancers can now be cured or controlled. Patients with cancer can exper experience a good quality of life. Health care workers make a difference in the lives of patients with cancer.